Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to Open Infra Live, the Open Infrastructure Foundation's live show. Uh, a few weeks ago, we hosted Open Infra Live keynotes, a special edition with key speakers and announcements. We took a short break after that, but we are now back to airing every Thursday at 15 UTC. This show is made possible thanks to the Open Infra Foundation member organizations. So thank you all again for making it possible. One uh, recurring episode on the show has been the Large Scale OpenStack Show, organized by the OpenStack Large Scale SIG. We invite operators of large scale deployments and get them to present how they solve a given operations challenge and discuss, discuss life between themselves, their different approaches. For today's episode, we decided to discuss operators' tips and tricks. Every operator has custom tools and tricks that they use to keep their OpenStack clusters ticking. And today, we'll, they will share them. So our guests today are Adrien Pansard, Site Reliability Engineer at OVH Cloud, assisted by Arnaud Morin, Jean Kuo, Infrastructure Software Engineer at Line, Shadatru Bandia Padiai, DevOps Engineer at Workday, Axel Jacquet and Thomas Guaron, Cloud Administrators at Infomaniac, and Belmiro Morera, cloud architect at CERN who will drive this discussion. As I mentioned, this is a live show, so feel free to drop comments and questions into the comments section throughout the show and we'll try to answer them live, as many of them as we can. Um, so it's time to get started, so um, take it away, Bill Miro. So hello everyone. I'm Bel Miro, I'm a computer engineer at CERN, and today I will be your host. And I'm really excited for today's episode. We will present and discuss different tools and tricks that OpenStack operators developed to help on their day-to-day -day operations. And without further ado, let's start with Axel and Toma from Infomaniac. They will give us a cool demo about the neutral tool that they are developing. Go ahead. Hello, thanks for having us. Hello, hello everyone. <laughs> so uh, before we start, I have a quick introduction of Infomaniac itself. If I can have, okay, so Infomaniac has been using OpenStack since the Grizzly release. So that's 2013, if I'm not mistaken. We're a fully uh, Swiss company, completely uh, independent from uh, uh, big financial systems. Uh, we have 200. We are nearly reaching 200 employees. Uh, we, since we're in Switzerland, we also have 40 percent of our income from Europe. And uh, Alphamaniac has been providing hosting services since for like the last 25 years. We operate uh, two data centers, and we are building a third one currently. And we have a public cloud that is open since last summer. Uh, we have implemented the basics of OpenStack, so Keystone Barbecue and Yoki Cloud Kitty, AODH, Neutron, Heat, Glenn Swift, Octavia, Nova, Cinder. We will implement more things like uh, Magnum and Designate and Manila and everything we can, if possible. Yeah. We are very happy to provide that on uh, top-notch, uh, very recent hardware uh, with NVMe for Ceph and uh, la latest uh, AMD CPUs. And uh, we are also very happy to provide that with the cheapest price on the planet. Okay, so and uh, so today we are going to present two tools that we use for everyday operations, two tools that uh, Excel wrote. So, so uh, the the first one is a is a tool to uh, to manage um, a shell virtual photos uh, follower. So um, for a little bit of context, if you want to to empty uh, a network node and uh, for make a maintenance, for example, and uh, we don't want to break uh, active TCP connection of our customer, so the simplest way to to do that is to install contract day on um, contract day instance for a shell virtual on um, network nodes, and um, this uh, this tool uh, acts in a network node and the namespace of a virtual router. So uh, the solution is to, to implement a contract day inside 
inside the HI router. So can I show a little demonstration of the tool? I will explain after all the step of this tool. Uh, so what you see here is on the right, there is two uh, HA routers. On the left, you can see Hyperf running on two VMs. And we just do the HA router failover. And as you can see on the left side, the TCP connection drops to zero byte per second, but the TCP connection is actually not dropped. And it's restored. Yeah. And as you can see, it has failed over. So the time to 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 to, to take the connection return is so we just made two seconds for the HA to change the the HA VIP uh, IP, and uh, five six seconds to the control jig to uh, to to have the possibility to uh, to reactivate the connection uh, between uh, between two servers. So the implementation is basically uh, simple. So um, at the beginning. Uh, we need to find the uh, network node on the which uh, um, uh, router are located. After that, uh, we need to have uh, some information about uh, about um, HA router. So we uh, we retrieve the HA interface uh, name and uh, the IP of the uh, HA network. And um, with all of this uh, information about uh, virtual routers, we can uh, we can uh, set up uh, the configuration of the control day and. Uh, um, created it and uh, transmit it to uh, the network node. And um, after we create the contact day configuration file with uh, um, uh, HA IP and, um, and uh, the uh, HA um, uh, interface, we, uh, we can uh, make the um, keep alive the script. So it is uh, the, um, the role of this uh, script is to, uh, to do the bascule between uh, active and uh, passive. Uh, at the level of the keep alive in the uh, in, um, uh, network uh, server. And uh, after that, we can start uh, contract day for each HR router. And um, we can uh, trigger the failover of that. Uh, so I, uh, we, um, we uh, stop the uh, interface of the active uh, router. And uh, after that, when, as we can see in the demonstration, uh, the uh, the, um, the failover is done and the connection is, uh, is skipped. So after all of this stuff, uh, we tear down uh, everything on uh, all um, servers. So it's basically really simple. And uh, it was only, only right in uh, Python, scribed to uh, Python. 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 <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's it. OK, so the, the, the next one is uh, connectivity check script. So uh, the context for that is the customer contact our super center for a connectivity problem about uh, on of this cloud. And um, we don't know if uh, we have an issue or if a user have an issue with his configuration. Sometimes it's make, uh, it may be security groups or internal firewall problem, or maybe a misconfiguration in the, in the, in the cloud, maybe DHCP or another one. So the solution is to check from outside uh, the connectivity with the, uh, the customer um, cloud. So um, for active that, we, uh, we, um, we see the, the tap interface directly on the computer, uh, on the computer host, and uh, we trigger uh, some uh, IP tables. I will explain uh, this after the demonstration. <laughs> so uh, what you see here is the script connects to the host of the VM, and then it inserts some IP table rules for that uh, VM. Then uh, it does a ping from an out outside, from another server, and then check if that pings reach the tap interface of, of the virtual machine on the host. At never uh, at any given time that a CMP packet is reaching the inside of the VM. Okay. So the implementation uh, is uh, simple too. So um, first, we need to identify uh, on which compute node uh, VM is located. Uh, after that, we uh, identify uh, IP table incoming traffic rule on the, of the VM in the compute node uh, directly. Uh, it's composed of the tape name uh, interface. So open v switch, uh, comma, uh, number of tape interface of the uh, VM. And so we introduce uh, two rules uh, on the top of the of the rules. So the first is a drop packet from um, 
from a ping from outside. Yeah, so like uh, the ICMP echo reply packet that we send to the host yeah. will be dropped from the point of view of the VM. Okay. Yeah. But we can the host still sees it and yes. logs it. Yes, that's it. And we have a second rule. It's uh, just a log about the first rule. And in this in this log rule, we inject a, a random hash. And after the check, we uh, we search the hash uh, in our log. And if we find it, uh, it's been uh, uh, the packet is, is uh, correctly uh, arrived in our infrastructure. So we don't have a problem of uh, connectivity. So it may be a, a customer uh, issue. And um, for an uh, analogy, uh, this is the same uh, as um, as uh, provided that the, if a mailman uh, gets the letter in uh, your mailbox, you uh, we verify if the letter is uh, is good delivery in our uh, box. So it's a little uh, analogy to explain uh, this uh, script. So <laughs> it is a bash uh, script, and uh, after that uh, we tear down everything like the first. So no trace, <laughs> and uh, it's totally transparent for the customer, and it works in uh, EPAV4, six with uh, host name of uh, of cloud or just uh, IP. Uh, yeah, simply if you give a host name, then we just uh, resolve it to the IP yeah. that is supposed to be in the cloud. Well, okay, that's it. Uh, so both of these tools are currently waiting in a Debian new queue. So hopefully it's going to be approved by the FTP masters soon. And if you want to contribute, uh, the it's uh, in the GitLab instance of uh, Debian, wherever I always do the Debian packages for OpenStack. Yeah, con contract day is just uh, uh, in in a trash at all. Contract day is just one uh, one thing. You have a lot of things like uh, migration of all DHCP agent list of all agent, uh, delete namespace, migrate namespace, uh, all action about uh, network nodes uh, are present. A lot of action of about network nodes are present in this script. And uh, the, the principal goal of this script is to uh, facilitate the life of uh, operator in uh, Astrand, for example. Uh, what, one, just an, another thing which I'd like to say. So we took the, packet, the package from uh, Suzy and I desperately searched for their Git and didn't find any. So if there is one, we would be very happy to merge back what we've done or whatever. Yeah. In the meantime, we also accept contribution over there. OK. So uh, thank you for your listening. So yeah. thank you. Thank you, both of you, Axel and Thomas. It's, it was a very interesting demo. Um, thank you so much. I think this will be very helpful for many other operators using Neutron and OVH uh, plugin in particular. Um, the other fellow operators here, do you have any question uh, for them? <laughs> All right, so Good. thank you so much again. We, I, I'm sure that we're gonna have questions also from the audience at the end. So I'll suggest that we continue to move on and the next up, it's Adrian and Arnaud from OVH. And that they will present a tool that they have been developing. They call it Unity. So the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Uh, so a little presentation of OVH first. Um, we are um, a big hosting company, a big hosting French company. Uh, we deploy OpenStack uh, since uh, eight years, I think. And uh, we offer VPS, dedicated servers, uh, web services, and uh, our public uh, our public cloud uh, uh, with OpenStack uh, is is composed of like uh, twenty regions. So we have a lot of hosts, a lot of flavors and aggregates to manage. And uh, we have to integrate uh, all these uh, entities with the OVH cloud uh, uh, world, billing, uh, uh, hardware, etc. So we have a, a lot of tools to manage all these parts. And uh, like I can present some of some of these tools, like um, our GitOps uh, tool, uh, which which is named Protcli, and uh, it's a simple Python tool to uh, 
to to have the diff between what we have in our dev infrastructure and in our prod infrastructure and when we are ready to prod a commit or a new package we are simply uh, creating a big diff uh, between all of uh, our repositories and uh, and prod that uh, into our puppet deployment so and it's it's then logged in a change log for for other team members to 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 read what's what's changed in the in the day or in the week or in the past week and uh how it is uh, uh executed it's 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 um, executed with ansible playbooks like when when we have to 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 prod something or to upgrade the db uh, when when we are upgrading an open stack uh, version uh, we did that when we were uh, prodding uh, 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 Newton from Juno or Stein from Newton. Uh, and uh, we have a system uh, which, is, which is composed of uh, Mistral workflows, uh, which are triggered by our safe healing uh, alerting and system. And those, uh, those kind of uh, workflows are very useful when we want to, uh, to join some host or to move a host from a region to another. And all this is triggered automatically. And uh, these are very uh, independent tools. But when we need to, um, to execute them manually, we, uh, we use a tool uh, that I deployed uh, uh, that I developed uh, called Unity, which is a kind of glue between all these uh, components. And it's a very useful uh, when we want to apply some operation on, on certain region, on certain host, on certain aggregate, and, and communicate that to, to, to the team. So uh, uh, I integrated um, a lot of components like uh, WebEx Teams, Objeni for alerting, uh, email for our old uh, mailing list, and our new status page, uh, uh, which is replacing our travel uh, our travel page. Um, like uh, I prepared a little demo, uh, which is uh, showing uh, a host maintenance when, like, we want to upgrade a host or or upgrade uh, the BIOS version. So it's a simple, a simple tool, which is draining the host uh, one instance uh, uh, by one. And there is a lot of options. I can I cannot show them all, but uh, you can see that I'm not trying to ping the VM before before it's migrating. Like normally, we we try to to ping the, v, the VMs before the migration and after the migration to to see if we broke something. And this tool is uh, is usable with uh, multi-region, multi-multi-host, or multi-rack, or you can put uh, as much arguments as you want, and it will try to uh, to 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 do as many things uh, as possible. So you can see that it migrated the the two instances on two different hosts and the maintenance succeeded. So like I said, it can manage uh, a lot of OpenStack entities in the, in the OVH, OVH uh, lifecycle of objects like flavors, aggregation, multi-region, multi-hosts. And now uh, we are trying to manage uh, ironic nodes we are deploying and specific OVH entities like uh, our data centers, uh, racks, switch, and, uh, and safe clusters. So that's it, if you have any question. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you. Very interesting demo. Um, is there any question? Um, um, yeah, I have a question.
so so that in the demo you have showed uh, was it like a live migration uh, or like uh, something similar to like a host evacuation uh, it's the live migration of instances uh, hosted uh, on the on the host uh, if the vm is active it will be uh, live migrated if the vm is uh, stopped it's uh, called mig migration and i have like options if we have a uh, an incident, uh, I can I can call migrate all the instances on the host, so it will it will shut down the the instance, call migrate it and restart it on another host. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. I, I have also a few questions for you. The, it was a pretty cool demo. Um, actually, the tool that I will present later it's uh, it's very similar to what you presented. Okay. Um, you mentioned what I found curious is that you mentioned that previously and uh, after and before the line migration happens, you ping the instance, but not during the line migration. Um, why no. that? Because we we also do it during the line migration. Okay, uh, because the by experience we know that uh, the. Um, if, if the VM was pinging, uh, it, it will only lost maybe one ping, or maybe two, but it's not critical for for our use, uh, for our for our customers. the The main thing is to to succeed to migrate the instance, and not not that it pings at each uh, millisecond. Right. Yeah, it's true. When we do that, we are not trying to do that. Um, but what we want to try to achieve is if the line migration fails, because we had some cases that the machine is unresponsive for not one ping, but like for 30 minutes during line migration, we wanted to be notified that that happened. Um, and then to try to figure out with the user if the machine is still unavailable or not and uh, act manually on that. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know if you observed that in, with your- the, our, our main issue is not that it doesn't ping that it's that the mag migration itself failed. So we are we are alerted when uh, when when that happens, and usually we are resetting the state and rebooting hard the VM, and notifying the customer that something went wrong. Thank you. Um, I think we have a question from yes. the audience. I I I've seen uh, oh, that you, you see some kind of progress when uh, you, there's live migrations. Do you use Nova API to do that, like uh, OpenStack uh, server migration show or something? Yeah, we are we are searching for for the destination host uh, because the scheduler give us a host and we 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 don't we we want to know which one is it. And um, yes, uh, there is a a, prog a progressive um, timer um, which is. Which is resetted each time we see a progress in the Nova progress, or if the disk, um, the the disk migration, is uh, is stalling or not. So we are we are resetting this this timer each time we saw a progress, and there is a, a timeout. Uh, it's it's uh, like one hour maximum, and if if this uh, timeout uh, uh, occurs, we are alerted. Yeah, there was also a quick question from the audience. Is any of this uh, uh, tooling from OVH uh, already open source? Uh, not yet, because um, this this uh, migration, this instance migration part is a very little piece of all this glue uh, in this tool. Uh, we have a lot of specific uh, OVH uh, concepts inside it. So I don't think it makes sense to open source it at least uh, globally but maybe some part of it could be open sourced and we are we are already thinking of it thank you and also uh, we have the um, this repo um, the for the operators uh, where we have some tools there maybe that could be an option for ovh to um, to have to put their tools there right yeah, yeah, we could. Uh, we have a lot of generic tool that could be used by a lot of. Uh, I think we have a banner uh, with the, the URL of this uh, repo. Here we go. 
All right, I think we, we need to move on. Um, thank you so much, um, Adrian and Arno. The next one is Jimmy uh, from Line, and it will give us a lot of tricks um, that he uses in the Line clouds. Yeah, right. so, um, so my name is Jin and I come from Line. Uh, so Line is a, a messaging app company located in Japan, and um, we're currently expanding to other fields uh, like uh, mobile payments. Um, so uh, today I'll introduce um, some tricks that we use in our OpenSec clusters. So yeah, so the first trick uh, we use is basically to do zero hypervised upgrade. So uh, what we do is that uh, we split our hypervisors into different groups and uh, upgrade them in serial. So um, the reason that why we try to upgrade uh, the hypervisors in serial is to prevent uh, multiple neutron agents or Nova Compute Service to restart at the short time. So uh, after restart, um, those agents or um, computes will send a lots of uh, RabbitMQ messages. So uh, even though we have, um, there's a option called periodic fuzzy delay, delay stats in uh, um, also messaging, if I remember correctly. But uh, in our case, we have more than uh, 4,000 hypervisor in our largest cluster. So uh, even though it's set to high numbers, uh, the message rate is still uh, very high, which will sometimes cause uh, RebMQ outages. So basically, uh, uh, this is how we uh, reduce the load of uh, RebMQ cluster during upgrades. Yeah, uh, so the second trick uh, we have is basically uh, we added a custom field in Keystone. So this custom field, we call it a uh, retired. So, um, in some of our production service, we use this uh, EC2 compatible Keystone credential generated with Keystone accounts. Well, um, some of the um, users associated with those Keystone accounts may uh, retire, uh, leave our company. Um, so basically, a simple way to disable the user is to set the enable equals files in the, uh, in the Keystone site. But uh, this will basically mo uh, make those credentials invalid, which will cause outages in our production services, which use those credentials. So we basically added a custom field uh, in uh, Keystone called retired to uh, identify if the um, user uh, is still in the company or not. So to prevent um, outages in our production services. Yeah, so the next trick is uh, dynamic hypervisor disabling. So um, most of the operators have uh, faced issue with uh, noisy neighbors. So uh, if your um, OPSEC cluster is configured with over-provisioning, you may, you may have uh, uh, VMs using more virtual CPUs than the actually physical CPUs it have. Well, if um, a lot of uh, VM on the same hypervisor is having high load, uh, it may cause uh, noisy neighbor issues. So uh, uh, we basically have a periodic script to scan the uh, metrics of the hypervisors uh, exposed by node exporter. So when we found out that um, certain hypervisor is having high load, uh, we basically uh, disable them um, to prevent uh, any new VMs being spawned on them. Uh, well, um, after a certain time where the uh, load is throttled down, um, we will enable them like again. So basically, we written a script to uh, scan the uh, metrics and then uh, temporarily disable the hypervisor to prevent a uh, new VM being scheduled and then uh, causing uh, a more severe noisy neighbor issues. Yes, uh, so these are the free tricks um, that uh, I would like to share today. So uh, feel free to ask any questions. Thank you, Jean. Very cool pre presentation. Do you have any questions for Jean? Well, actually, um, I will take the floor because I have some questions for you, Jean. So yeah. you, you have 
4,000 plus uh, 4, uh, 4, nodes, Nova and Neutron behind the uh, a RagTMQ cluster? Uh, yep. So we have. Oh, that, that, uh, that is brave. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, we okay, didn't split I, I, uh, sales in our cluster right now. Okay, pretty cool. Um, so, regarding the, the last thing that you presented, the dynamic um, hypervisor load check. That is pretty interesting. We suffer from similar issue. So the CPU still time um, in the VMs because of course we over provision uh, CPUs. Um, however, when that issue happens, actually we need to act. So because if the node, if the node is in I loads, probably there is, maybe there is CPU still, but maybe there is not. So we are not disabling the compute node. But when we detect or the users tell us that they are, they are CPU still, we need manually to intervene to line migrate uh, some of the VMs uh, there. And we don't see an easy way to do this automatically, especially because at the hypervisor level, we are not able to see if the compute nodes, uh, it's in CPU uh, still time or, or not, the VMs uh, that is hosting, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is an interesting problem. Um, Definitely what you, you did uh, probably helps um, for your use case, but this is something that I also would like to, to hear others' experience on this, the CPU steal time if you're over-provisioning CPUs. There's also a good question on the YouTube chat from Arne um, asking, Gene, which metrics you use for to actually measure that overload? Um, if I remember correctly, uh, as this project is done by another member, so uh, we use uh, the um, CPU load, so uh, not the context switches right now. So uh, it may be good to look into context switches also. Yeah, we found that context switches are um, the metric that give us the, the better approximation that there is a CPU still happening in, in the virtual machines. All right, uh, any other question for Gene? Or can we move on? Right, thank you so much, Gene. So let's continue yes. to Shatadru from Workday. He will present us the Cloud Map tool and um, a different tool to clean up Nova DBs. So you have the floor. Uh, hi, uh, so can we have the uh, presentation? Thanks. Uh, so, hi, I'm Shatadro, and I work at Workday um, as DevOps engineer. So, uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So, just like little background. So, um, Workday is uh, provides leading enterprise cloud for uh, finance and HR, and uh, so I work at Workday Private Cloud, uh, which basically is OpenStack, and uh, it provides a large, uh, it basically hosts large amount of uh, Workday services. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, we have uh, 66 production clusters throughout the globe in uh, five different data centers. Uh, we have about, about uh, 16,000 compute nodes in total, and uh, we have about 51,000 uh, instances running, uh, which serves about 72 different workday services um, throughout uh, our entire OpenStack footprint. So uh, having such a large uh, you know, deployment comes with like its own set of challenges, and uh, one of the challenges uh, we have seen early on is uh, we were not able to uh, solely rely on Horizon uh, to visualize uh, all our cluster resources uh, because we have such high um, number of clusters. Um, so we have created uh, a tool called CloudMap, um, which is which basically provides uh, centralized reporting and search for all. Workday VMs uh, across all the data centers. Uh, it is designed to provide like simple visualization uh, um, 
and it can also answer like uh, user queries um, and it also helps us uh, with the operation and troubleshooting uh, to see for example like some kind of commonality between like some uh, you know vms which are probably having issues um, a little background about the tool is um, it is written in python uh, we are using the django framework and uh, to be specific, it is uh, using the Django admin interface. And um, we, uh, so so the way it works is, um, so basically all our OpenStack clusters, uh, they run uh, a script uh, that is also a Python script, uh, which basically calls OpenStack API uh, to aggregate all the data regarding host, hypervisor, and all the different OpenStack objects. And it basically pushes that uh, dumps the data in a JSON format, uploads it uh, in S3 bucket, and Cloud Map uh, tool basically, uh, you know, imports the data. Uh, all the cluster basically sends the data in a, like a five-minute interval, and uh, same for, uh, you know, uh, this Cloud Map also imports the data in a five-minute interval. Uh, we use MariaDB as a uh, database for the tool, so. Uh, we use different like Django frameworks, uh, for example, Django Auth LDAP uh, for LDAP authentication, Django TZ Detect for uh, detecting user time zones, and so on. Uh, due to security reasons, uh, I, I, I couldn't show the actual instance of CloudMap, but uh, I have loaded uh, a test uh, instance of CloudMap with sample data set, uh, which uh, I will demo. So as you can see, this is like the main interface, uh, which shows all the different things we have, uh, clusters, flavors, host, uh, control plane nodes. And on the right side, we have like different reports, uh, which is used by different uh, stakeholders and users. Uh, so for example, if you see, we have like different hosts and uh, you can see if the host is up or uh, if it is enabled, uh, which cluster it is, uh, which kind of hardware it is using, uh, what is the next page, this kind of information. So some of the information we capture from OpenStack, uh, we also use Chef. So some information is basically captured from Chef. Uh, we also provide like uh, advanced search kind of features. So if you would like to uh, search some, uh, like for example, compute nodes for a specific cluster and um, which are probably disabled, uh, you can probably you can basically uh, write a query uh, to do that. So uh, again, we are using a Django feature called Django QL query language uh, to implement this. So you know, and all this data which we basically select can be exported um, to a CSV format uh, uh, and. Uh, you can basically use it for reporting purpose in Excel and stuff like that. Um, but we also have some uh, integrated reporting, uh, you know, built into this tool, uh, which I will uh, demo. So, yeah. So let's go back to the. Yeah. So th these are, for example, our. Uh, oh, Uh, so yeah, these are basically our control plane nodes. Uh, like I'm, I'm just like kind of demoing uh, how you can like search and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, these are virtual machine. Uh, we have integration with uh, our logging tool uh, and our metrics tool. Uh, which basically kind of provides uh, links. We also have integration with the Jira. For example, um, if we have a disable node, it basically uh, you know points out to a specific Jira. Uh, you and it's kind of like uh, very intuitive. So, for example, if you look at a host, you can see all the virtual machine running on top of it. Um, so this is uh, I will show one of the reports. So this is like a capacity utilization. Uh, we are using C3GS um, uh, for making beautiful charts. Uh, so you can check utilization uh, in different environment or a specific cluster. 
uh, you can see uh, the uh, utilization even in the host level. Uh, so for example, if you have a no valid host issue, uh, so we can see, you know, in a, in a host level, which host has how, how much resources and so on. So uh, I will show you a couple of more reports. So this is for checking how much uh, capacity we have available. For example, if we want to deploy a certain flavor in our environment, uh, how much, how many VMs we would be able to deploy in different uh, clusters we have. So this is uh, for, for that. So we can kind of predict uh, how many VMs we would be able to deploy in which uh, data centers and clusters. Uh, uh, next is like, this is another uh, reporting which uh, we use very frequently to see how many uh, like computes we have enabled and disabled uh, per data center and uh, per clusters. Uh, similar to that, we have like how many VMs we have uh, per data center and per cluster. So this kind of like reporting, uh, we, we can basically do using this tool. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much about it. And yeah, th this information uh, is, is not coming from OpenStack. We have like a chef integration. So this information, uh, shows which operating system we have, which hardware model we have, which vendors. Uh, and you can uh, obviously, you know, uh, do advanced search to uh, search specific um, things, for example, nodes, which is running in this cluster and have this kind of hardware. So this kind of things you can do with this tool. So yeah, that's pretty much about it uh, for the first tool, if you have any question on this and then I will move to the next one. So I, I'm sure it's a very opinionated um, tool that, that you developed, right, for uh, that is in use on Workday. But is it available uh, somewhere that can be like inspiration for others to use and to adapt oh. uh, for their infrastructures? Yeah, uh, it's not yet. So this kind of started as a, like a pet project and uh, we never uh, kind of, uh, you know, intended to use in even our production. Uh, but then it actually eventually grew and grew and it has like a lot of hard coded, you know, uh, work day specific things like, uh, like cluster namings and stuff like that. So, but yeah, we do plan, uh, we do have plan to like, for example, like uh, remove those stuff um, and probably like make some part of it uh, available uh, by, you know, cleaning, uh, but yeah, we have like a lot of cleanup to do, uh, but, uh, once we do that, probably we can, uh, make, uh, this, uh, available. Cool. Thank you. I don't know if there is any other question for this project. Otherwise I think you can, you can go ahead to the other tool. Yeah. The next one is like pretty simple Python script. Uh, it uses, um, yeah, I, I will demo it first. So, so as you can see, uh, I'm passing a configuration file, and it is basically moving uh, the. Uh, it's basically doing a purge. Uh, it's moving the deleted instance uh, to the shadow tables. Um, so, uh, the the reason we use it is like we have different cluster which has like completely different types of workloads and the rate uh, in which the VMs are created and deleted is completely different. Uh, so we needed a tool uh, which can kind of fit into like, uh, you know, this kind of different workloads. Uh, I will uh, show you one of like the configuration. Uh, for example, you can do dry runs and stuff like that. You can uh, select the, uh, you know, number of days to, uh, I will explain those and like number of VMs to delete. Um, and if you want to, say, clean up the shadow tables and stuff like that. Um, so we use this tool uh, to kind of like uh, like uh, clean up Nova database. We have seen some performance issue, you know, if the database kind of, uh, you know, kept unchecked uh, because some of the environments we have like hundreds of deletes uh, and creates uh, per minute. Uh, and we have not used, uh, say the Nova managed tool, which uh, the community provides because we had some issues uh, with it um, and uh, including some performance issues um, because, uh, you know, like, uh, so so we, we, when you delete the entries from the database, sometimes we have seen the database getting locked and like 
you know, performance issues. So we are kind of like super careful when we like delete. So this tool has a hard coded limit. It only deletes say 250 entries uh, in one batch so that, you know, it does not uh, impact the performance because uh, we cannot like take regular maintenance windows in the cluster. So uh, we have certain uh, say times when, when we can run certain things. And so, yeah, that, that's um, pretty much about it. Uh, and it you can kind of tune, say uh, how, like uh, you, you can say you want to delete like uh, VMs, which has been deleted one month ago and or say one day ago. So this kind of like granular tuning uh, 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 is something we required. So we kind of, uh, it's like a pretty simple Python script, uh, which uses uh, SQL Alchemy to query the VMs, uh, uh, query the database entries and then just deletes them. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. Uh, first question is, did you share that script? Is it uh, open source somewhere? Yeah. Uh, not, no, no, not yet. So this is like a, we, uh, like a pretty new thing we have done. Like we have seen some uh, issues recently uh, with the uh, database growing really, size growing like in GBs. So uh, this is like a pretty new tool, but yeah, we, we probably have plans to uh, make it available somewhere. Yep. Actually, when I saw this, I was a little bit puzzled um, be because we are using for this use case the Nova Manage tool that is provided by the community. And uh, for us, it's working great. Um, maybe that doesn't have that granularity that uh, you are talking about. Um, but the, the way that we do it to overcome that is basically every day in all the databases, we do this cleanup. Um, and that is helping us uh, a lot to, to keep the, um, the size of the databases on check. And if I remember correctly, we also have a tool, a similar tool at OVH called uh, OS Archiver, which is in the OS Ops repository now. So I was wondering how that compared to, uh, to the tool that you are using. Yes, may maybe we can do a unified tool for all these problems. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Probably you should go in Nova directly. Well, well um, maybe improving the Nova Manage tool that is already there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that will be a great proposal. So any other question for Shapa yeah, I think what, one difference for the OS Archiver tool, if I remember correctly, is that it, it handled more than just uh, Nova. So it, it also went to the other so it was more generic. That's why the reason why it was separated from the from the Nova tool. Even if it's for Nova, that it's the most uh, uh, yeah. urgent, I would say. Yeah, it's for Neutron and uh, and other components. Yeah. Yeah. Even we have like a different like a uh, similar tools for like cleaning up images and uh, stuff like that. Um, but yeah. All right. Any other question for Shapadru? Okay, so thank you uh, so much. So, so now it's my time to, to present two tools uh, that we developed uh, at CERN that help us in our day-to-day -day operations. Um, I'm not brave enough to give you live demos, um, but uh, okay, let's discuss these tools together. So CERN Cloud by Numbers. I always find this slide very interesting because it gives you a glimpse of the CERN Cloud size. And actually, it changed a lot since uh, the last time that I talked in Open Infra Live and I presented um, this slide. You can see the number of users, the number of projects that we have in our clouds. Uh, but what is really interesting and uh, what changed from the last time is the number of instances uh, that we now have. So if you remember in previous numbers, um, we had around 800 or 8,000 8, uh, compute nodes. And that reduced to around 1,700 compute nodes, uh, and which uh, consequently reduced the number of VMs from 30,000 VMs to around 15,000 VMs that we have today. So the reason for that change in these numbers is because we moved all the batch workloads that previously were running on in virtual machines 
to bare metal nodes that are provisioned now by Ironic. Still, everything is still in the OpenStack um, clouds. We just moved uh, some workloads from virtual machines to, to bare metal. All right, so let's start with the, the migration cycle tool. We developed this tool to migrate instances between different compute nodes. But what is really the difference um, using this tool and running the OpenStack server migrate? I'm not talking about line migration of one or very few instances, but the line migration of thousands of virtual machines to empty the compute nodes. So this is the goal for, for this tool. For this, we also need integration with our infrastructure. It's not just live migrating the instances. We need all the integration with the monitoring, alarming, and also a lot of orchestration because the VMs cannot be live migrated at the same time. And we need to monitor the migration state, the migration, and the VM health uh, during the live migration. That's why we felt the need to develop a tool like this one. So currently, we have three different use cases where we are using uh, this tool. The first one is hardware repairs. <clears throat> hardware do break. Fortunately, sometimes, even if we detect that the hardware has some kind of issue that needs to be replaced, uh, the instances continue to run, and it's possible to line migrate them. So what we did was to design a workflow based on migration cycle that the repair team can use through Rundeck to automatically empty the, empty the compute nodes that are affected by the issue and make them ready for the repair. As you can imagine, this needs to be connected to the different pieces of the CERN infrastructure, the monitoring, the ticket system, uh, and so on. And it is where this tool actually helps. The advantage is now that most of the hardware interventions in our clouds, if the compute node is not really dead, are completely transparent to our users. The other use case is hardware retirement. We have always hardware that needs to be retired and replaced by new one. What we do in these cases is we add the new hardware into the cell where the hardware will be replaced because we use cells and a cell will be the commission uh, entirely. So we add the new hardware in the, in the cell and then we line migrate all the instances from the old compute nodes to the new compute nodes. And all this process can take weeks because most of our virtual machines have local disks. So all the data needs to be transferred. And the migration cycle helps in all this orchestration and automation. And finally, we have the other use case that is the kernel upgrade of the compute nodes. The retirement cycle of our compute nodes is between three and five years. And actually, some of the compute nodes have these uh, uptimes. So sure, this is very good for the user instances availability, but also means that the kernel was not upgraded upgraded during all this time. So we wanted to change these. We wanted to have frequent kernel upgrades in the compute nodes. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want to disrupt user instances. So the solution for that is to do constant line migrations, empty a compute node, reboot that compute node, and repeat again to a different compute node. Again, you see that this requires automation uh, or orchestration to, to achieve this. So these are some of the steps uh, or features that are performed by the migration cycle. Disable compute nodes and to remove them from the schedule. Disable the, the alarming, because if the node is rebooted, for example, for the kernel upgrade uh, or stopped for a, an hardware intervention, it will generate an alarm and then we need to act on it. Um, during the line migration, we need to monitor the VM health um, because we do this because some VMs become unavailable during the line migration. In our case, uh, we this is mostly related because we have the local disks, and for very large VMs, this this can happen. Unfortunately, we need to notify the operators if something goes wrong, if a migration fails. Reboot the compute nodes, of course, and then also parallel execution, because as you can imagine, if we do this sequentially, this can take a lot of time, especially for 
hardware decommission, where we need to line migrate completely in the entire cell. So this also supports parallel execution where we can line migrate multiple instances at the same time. And then also have a nice CLI interface and an easy integration with Rendec, that is the tool that we use for automation and orchestration. So in your left, um, we have an example of the Rendec interface that the repair team sees when they need to perform a hardware repair intervention. You can see that they need to insert the hosts that are affected where they will perform the intervention, the ticket number, and the operation that needs to be performed. So for example, a reboot, a power off. And in your right, you have the CLI that is used for more advanced um, utilization. For example, the hardware commission. Uh, for, and, and this is done by the OpenStack uh, operators, not by the, the repair team. And you see that the CLI supports multiple options that we are been inserting over time. So the migration cycle code is available in this repo. Of course, it's very opinionated and done for the CERN infrastructure, but it can help you and give you some inspiration if you are planning a similar tool uh, for your infrastructure. Also, we wrote very recently a blog post about this tool, and um, it's available in our tech blog. Um, you, you can have a read if you're interested about it. So the other tool that I would like to talk about is the DB cycle. And um, as you can see by the name, we are not very creative when giving names to projects. Uh, the DB cycle solves the problem on how to test the, the DB schema upgrade and data migrations of of databases when having multiple cells. This is basically for the Nova upgrade validation. So there is one Nova DB per cell. If you only have one cell, that is maybe easy to validate. However, if you have uh, 40 cells like we, we have today, or 80 cells like we had a few months ago, that is extremely painful to do to validate the Nova upgrade. So we wrote a very simple tool that what it basically does is to do a dump of, a data, of the Nova database, then upload that dump to a different MySQL instance, do the DB sync and the DB online data migration, and at the end, confirm that everything uh, worked fine. So that the DB is actually in the new and expected DB version schema and the online data migration uh, happened without any issue. So this tool is still not available uh, in our repos. We'll make, try to, to make it available very, very soon. And as you can imagine, over the years, we developed many other tools that help us in our day-to-day -day operations. Um, for example, the project lifecycle or VM expiration. We already talked about these um, tools that we developed. Um, if you are interested about them, um, there is a talk that was given, I believe, in the summit in Berlin. Um, the video, it's available in that URL. And also we have some other blog posts about uh, some of these tools, for example, the security, the expiration of the virtual machines. So that is for me. Um, happy to continue this discussion. Um, so you see, Adrian, that we, we try to solve yeah. the same issue with different tools. Yes. Uh, <laughs> You want to go ahead, Adrien? No, no, just to say we, we have uh, some Mistral workflows, which is doing the, the same operations. Yeah, it, it could be inter interesting to, to share our knowledge uh, about it. I wonder why you need to test uh, DB migration when there is grenade job in the OpenStack CI. Um, well, we had some a lot of issues uh, over the years because that is tested for um, a sample data only, right? However, when you have your databases with maybe a different um, character set set up in your MySQL and you have a lot of databases with maybe different versions, 
because they were set up at uh, different times with maybe different character sets because no one noticed when that was set up. Sometimes you can get a, an issue when uh, do DB schemas and online data migrations, especially online data migrations, because that will depend in, in your data. And yeah. over the years, we, we have been identifying some issues. Yeah. I experienced once a problem upgrading from stretch to a buster to yeah stretch to buster. Maybe something similar. Well, we always validate database migration, not only in Nova, but in all the other projects. But Nova, it's more tricky because we have a lot of cells. So it's very tedious going through all these um, different databases, download them, do this validation manually. But I believe others should do the DB validation before an upgrade. Are you doing the same thing? Um, We, we which do something similar like we we have clusters to uh, try the grade that we populate with the old DB. All right. So I, I do that on a virtualized environment where OpenStack runs on VMs. All right, great. So, so Thierry, Thierry yeah. is here, so probably we have some questions from the audience. Yes, we don't have much time, but uh, we still wanted to. Uh, discuss a few questions. There's first one from um, Mikael Salo on uh, why not using OpenStack Quatcher for this. It was in the context of, uh, if I remember correctly, the, the evacuation tools and measuring uh, workloads. Yes, I can, I can give some, uh, some uh some tips about it uh, we, we tried to to deploy it some years ago but uh, honestly it was not production ready um, and we, we would like to improve the the tool but we didn't have uh, enough enough uh, enough uh, people in the team to work on it so we prefer a step-by-step -step, uh, improvement on our tool Okay. Well, um, I, I can also comment on that because we evaluated Watcher. Um, Watcher is very interesting. Um, however, it's very it, it, it works very well for static environments. So you, you have work, your workloads and then you run Watcher and it will do a plan on all, uh, which line migration should perform to improve the, to, to, to improve the, the resource utilization, for example. There are several metrics that you can use. However, if you have a large infrastructure, you can you see that that plan can be really uh, out of date before it really finished the line migrations. And when it finished, it's already um, it's already not valid. Um, so yeah, the, I think that there are several things that can be improved on Watcher. We evaluated; we are not using it um, also in your side. And one last question from Song Su Cho on uh, live migration. How many seconds would you have the network be disconnected? So like if you ping every second, how many pings would you last? Uh, maybe I can answer that one. Uh, it really depends on your network topology. Let's say if you don't use DVR, then there's a good chance that it won't ever happen to you that you will lose more than, like, I don't know, three pings. If you use uh, DVR, then it depends on how you configure your network equipment, because that's how you got the path with uh, ARP. And then if you use, let's say, I guess in OVH, you don't have that trouble because you use BGP to the host, right? So uh, it really depends on, on your network setup and, and you can't say how much downtime you will get. Like, if you tell me which kind of setup you have, then I can explain to you how it's going to be. If you, let's say you use DVR and a large uh, L, L2 uh, networking, then you probably will get a lot of uh, downtime, like maybe 15 to 30 seconds. Yeah, so the, the answer is like always in, in OpenStack, it depends. 
so I think I think we need to wrap up because we're we're already over time. Uh, thanks, yeah. Bel Miro, and thanks to everyone on the show for joining us today. Um, it's really time for us to close this episode. Those were great tools and, and pro tips, and I'm sure our audience learned a lot from this discussion. Um, we have one more episode before the end of the year, so make sure to come back next week as our very own Mark Collier will discuss highlights and best of moments of our recent Open Infra Live keynotes. Uh, there were some very exciting moments there, special announcements, so make sure you don't miss it. Um, one of the other announcements we made during that show was that our in-person Open Infra Summit is back. Uh, we'll be going to Berlin June 7 to 9 next year. So uh, mark your calendars and you can already buy your early bird ticket right now at <laughs> openinfra.dev slash summit. Uh, well, you will also find sponsorship information if you're interested in sponsoring the event. And uh, finally, don't forget to, uh, that this show is uh, for all of the open infrastructure community. So if you have an idea for a future episode, we really want to hear from you. You can submit your ideas at ideas.openinfra.live. Uh, so see you again next week on Thursday at 15 UTC. Thanks again to all of our speakers who joined us today. And special thanks to Belmiro for leading the discussion. See you soon on Open Infra Live. Bye.